You know, having been in the Sex Pistols, one of the most iconic bands in history, you've co-written songs that will always be cherished and remembered. So what inspired you to keep making new music after all these years? Well, it's work. It's work. It's, um, like, I'm fortunate enough, I mean, not at the moment, and the rug's been pulled from under my feet a little bit because of what's going on. I should have been in America and Canada in, um, beginning of March. I was going to open up for a big show with the Dropkick Murphys. They asked me to do this in Patrick's Day show in Boston. And then I was going to do about 10 solo acoustic shows, which I do quite a lot. I was coming up to Canada. Toronto and Montreal and then had some more shows round through the Midwest and the East Coast and I was going to end up in New York and oversee the mixing of a new album that we got in the camp. I like to earn money from what I'm doing now because it makes me feel more of a man about myself. I think I still write pretty good songs. I put on a good live show. I think all my songs are the same old message <laughs> really. Yes. <laughs> Just talk about what's on your mind, and what's on your mind is what's, it's just something hanging in there, really. That's the general thing. I think it's the same thing for most people, yeah. really. I, I think one of the best quotes I've ever read in the music business was somebody asked John Lennon if, they, if, he, if he was trying to write songs for the kids still, you know, when he, made, when he was older. And he thought about it and he said, no, I'm trying to write songs for the kids who grew up with me. And that's, I think that's what I'm kind of do. You know, we all have our, um, you know, the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune and it's how you roll with it, really. And it's, you know, whether you're writing a song that you're not going to give up on some lady or some lady's giving up on you or life or the politicians or you can read between the lines on that. I like playing, you know, I like seeing what's out there. Um, and I like the immediacy of doing a solo show as well, you know, because it's, whether it's a song you wrote 40 years ago or 40 minutes ago, when people connect with it, it's a real big buzz. Yeah, so. that's very cool. You know, what do you think about um, the music industry today in terms of the internet? Like, it's completely revolutionized things. Some people say it's bad. Some people say it's great. Where do you fall along the lines? Um, it's great if you understand it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think younger kids have a, have a real handle on it mm -hmm. because they've grown up with it. I like to not be a Luddite and try and encompass it all, but the more I know about the internet and, and you know, and viral spreading and blah, 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 yeah. the less I know. Like, I think the internet's great in that it gives you access as a musician to just have a worldwide release instantly. But yeah, my so, one. Go ahead. Yeah, but as you know, everybody around the world is watching it, and these days, thanks to Steve Jobs, and again, we're talking here on Skype through my older laptop. Everybody is a musician. Everybody's a writer. Everybody's a photographer. Everybody's a DJ. Everybody's a filmmaker. And there's so much dross out there. Yeah. Then you got to wade through it all. Yeah, but, that's the big problem. So outside of the Sex Pistols, um, what? work are you most proud of as a musician in your career? Well, the most fun thing I did, it was done about eight or nine years ago now, but my all-time favourite bands are Faces, and I played with them. I was in the band. We only did about 10 gigs, but the last gig we did, we had Lion the Fuji Festival in Japan in front of 50,000 people, and it was the band I used to stand in front of the mirror when I was 14 and couldn't play, pretending I was in it. And I'm like, playing. Rod Stewart didn't do it, but it was Ronnie with Kenny Jones, Ian McGlagan, and, um, yeah, that was kind of pretty cool. I like, I like doing that. I'm quite proud of what I'm doing now, actually. I'm, I'm managed to keep going. I've got great players I get to play with. On the So It Go, the So It Go, the Good To Go album. That's El Slick and Sandra and Phantom, both mates of mine. Um, the new record we've got in the can is pretty good. I think you're as good as your next record, really. Yeah. And I think what, I have kind of got going for me. And I think a lot of the punk people is that we were never idiots in the first place. Nobody really made that much money that they can afford to go and live in an ivory tower and become divorced from reality. So we all kept our feet on the ground and we've all led quite interesting lives. Um, and we got a lot to sing about. 
Whether it's the same old shit, there's a few different words describing the same old shit. <laughs> <laughs> so, in terms of music that you might want to make in the future, is there anything that you would like to do that you haven't done yet musically? Um, yeah, do you know what? I, I, there was a shop open. I had to get something sorted out of my car. And there was a shop open, a sort of second-hand music shop, and they got a few double basses in there. And I went and had a go on one. And I can get round it, and I keep promising I'm going to buy myself one. Because I, I make some Slim Jim, and he comes over, and he's always short of a stand-up bass player. And I could do that. But also, I've been listening to a lot of sort of bebop jazz. And um, I thought, oh, maybe I can sit at home in lockdown practicing my scales and get a gig in the jazz band. <laughs> That'd be quite good. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe for more because there is a lot more to come. All the videos on my channel are original. I'm the one filming, editing, and conducting all the interviews. So if you guys like what you see and you want to support, the best way to do so is honestly just to subscribe. Thanks for watching.